Hi, welcome to Valwa Media. My name is Duncan Woodhouse. I know what you're thinking. My hair's getting a bit shabby and my beard's getting a bit long. That's what lockdown has done to quite a lot of us. I've started to look a little bit like Tom Hanks from Castaway. And yes, people have said I look a bit like Tom Hanks, including as well Woody from Toy Story. Let's see if you can see the resemblance. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. What I really wanted to cover today is DaVinci Resolve. My first question is, if you're not using DaVinci Resolve, why not? DaVinci Resolve is free. That's right, free. There's not, there's not many times I can say we get something as good as DaVinci Resolve and it's free. Now, of course, there is a paid version. Now, I got a, a paid version when I got the DaVinci, uh, sorry, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, which always makes me laugh because it's not like you're ever gonna put this in your pocket, right? It's, it's, fairly, it's fairly substantial. But I got, a, I got a paid version of the free version, if that makes sense. But the free version is fantastic. If you're having issues grading and pri uh, applying presets very often is what people do, because it's quick and easy, you really need to, first of all, do something like, something called color correcting before you add any presets, or you do your own grading. My view is, color correct properly and apply your own grade. It's actually much easier than trying to apply, in the long term, presets over bad footage, because it just doesn't work. So we're just about to jump into DaVinci Resolve, but first of all, I just thought I'd show you, just in case you don't know, whereabouts you can download DaVinci. Now, if you browse to blackmagicdesign.com, in this case, it's forward slash UK, and basically scroll down, and here you've got Introducing DaVinci Resolve 17. So obviously you would click on that, take you to this page, and somewhere down here, you'll basically get a link to download DaVinci Resolve 17. And here we are, DaVinci Resolve, and you click on Download Now. So let's jump into DaVinci Resolve. I've already imported footage and created a timeline and I find the best way to do that is to go to the edit page here if you go to the bottom. And firstly right click and create a timeline. Let's right click here, timeline, create a new timeline, call it whatever you want to. And then create a bin, so add a bin. That's essentially a new folder, I've just called that footage. So to import media, you can right click and select import media here. And that's command I on a Mac or control I on Windows. And that will import, open the import window, sorry. And here you can just select everything and click open. So I've already got the footage here that I then I've now dragged the items I wanted onto the timeline here into our sequence. So the reason I've picked all of this footage is that I have a particular color cast on all of them. As we see as we can go through them, as well as potentially exposure issues. And we can define a color cast as an overall wash of color or tint caused by a number of factors that we'll touch on in a second. So things like the white balance on your camera when you're shooting has a big effect, as does the type of lighting you're using to light the scene and whether you're indoor or outdoor. So all of these projects I've shot or worked on and they show how footage can be affected by a variety of factors. In the first scene we can see two gangsters carrying what looks like a dead body. When I shot this I changed uh, lens and I didn't alter the white balance to compensate for the change in lighting conditions. As a result it has a colour cast of blue which didn't suit the rest of the shots for the film so it needed changing in post-production. And in the second clip we have a few problems in that it has a more yellow colour cast and it's also both overexposed in areas and, and underexposed in others. So in the third clip we can see it's shot inside a pub and the internal lighting has caused a very distinctive yellow colour. So lastly these cute doggies on a sand dune. I've added these just to show you how much easier it is actually to colour correct and grade if you're using much flatter looking footage called log footage. We'll come on to that last as not all cameras have that by default. So let's move from the edit page to the colour page where we'll get stuck into grading the footage. Here we are on the colour page which we can see is very different from the edit page. And very quickly here are the clips which you can independently make changes to in the nodes on the top right hand side. Resolve creates one node automatically for you and I've created another serial node here. And we're only gonna be talking about serial nodes. And you can do that by right clicking and add a node, add serial node, or you can use the Alt and S key on a Windows machine or Option S on a Mac. The next thing we want to do is label them. So node label, in this case, I've called it primary and grade. First node I was called the primary as this will be where we do the majority of our work to affect the color balance and exposure before applying a grade. So before we start, we don't wanna be 
guessing what we're doing, we want to be using the scopes. And you can open those by workspace, make your way down, video scopes, and turn them on. Now we're just going to jump to the first image here. So the scope we want to look at is the parade scope here. And straight away we can see this image has got a blue color cast. We can see RGB, red, green, and blue. And we can see there's more blue in, in the image compared to red and green. So how do we adjust that to get it more neutral? Let's jump down to the bottom left and we can see four primary color wheels, lift, gamma, gain, and offset, otherwise known as shadows, midtones, and highlights. And the offset wheel adjusts the whole image. So we want to do two things. We want to make sure the exposure is right for what we want and also the color is correct. And that often means neutralizing any color cast. Top tip here is always make sure you clap at every shot and I'll show you why now. So I scrub through the footage and I'm using the few frames of which the clapper starts and you can see a white clapperboard with a number of colors. This could save you hours of messing around. So the first thing I always try is to select the dropper down here or pipette if you're in the UK down in the bottom left here and then use the clapper as a source of white. So straight away in the parade scope, we can see this has done a great job of balancing the shot. So we can now do some more tweaking and also get the exposure right. So let's move down to the color wheels and adjust the RGB levels and later we'll adjust for exposure so we can get the balance of light and dark areas. So one way to first the tweak the color balance if it's not quite right is to use the offset wheel here and use the small circle in the middle now the trick here is to move this in the opposite direction to the color you don't want if that makes sense so watch what i'm doing i want less blue so i'm pushing the wheel towards orange between red and yellow and see how that affects the picture and the parade scope and just balances out the picture a little bit so it just makes it a little bit more neutral so the next thing we want to do is adjust for exposure and you can do this with the wheels below the lift, gamma and gain. So here we can see wheels. So what we really want to do is make the dark areas touch the bottom of the parade scope and also the light areas touch the top of the parade scope. So moving the lift or the darks, watch the parade scope. You really want to just push them to the bottom here. And with the light areas, we just want to push those a little bit further up too. This gives us a better exposed picture. When I first started, it seemed counterintuitive that we want the picture to look slightly flat and very neutral, but these are the best conditions to grade footage. So now we're happy with that. Let's move on to the next one. So on the second clip, we can see this has got a distinctive yellow tint to it. It's also very underexposed in places and overexposed in others. So again, the idea is we want to use a clapperboard. Let's Let's just scrub through and let's see if our dipper makes a difference which is great that also neutralizes it that looks a little bit better on the parade scope and now we want to adjust it for exposure we don't need to do much with the lift because it's already pushing towards the bottom so let's just have a look at the gain if we don't mind clipping we could go a little bit further up but it might just make the overexposed areas worse so it's best to avoid that bring it down a little bit and maybe just move the mid tones here so you're not pushing too much you're going into the mid-tones without affecting the darks and the whites too much. And that gives us a nice flat image to then start a potential grade. Now we're not going to talk too much about this, but the other things you can do here is you can use what are called secondaries, where you can move uh, this particular box, for example, you can move it over a particular area. And what you can do is say, I don't like this exposure here. And you can you can select those secondaries and just work on this area. So you could then come back to your color wheel, for example, and then take the, the brightness way down and that's what i had to do on this scene and work on lots of different elements to try and bring the exposure down and try and make this a better shot for the film but for now we're just going to leave that like that that's fine so here in the third one we can see a very distinctive yellow color cast where the red is higher than the green and the blue so we don't have a clapper but we do have a source of white here so let's try the dipper again and that's done a pretty good job of neutralizing to an extent i still think we're going to need to push the blue up a bit more and line it up with the red and the green so let's push away again with the color we don't want is in the spectrum so let's push it towards blue and that brings up the blue in the parade and then just move it around until you sort of feel comfortable that it is a little bit more neutral and you're starting to get the look that you want. Now I'm quite happy with that. We want to make sure we adjust the exposure too. So bringing the lights up a touch and making sure the dark touches the bottom again in the parade. Now you might decide actually that's quite a nice grade now we've neutralized it and actually some directors have asked me to just make it look like this. Now on the last one, all I've done here is just show you what you can get if you've got a camera that shoots log. It looks incredible 
comfortably flat here and we do have a little bit of exposure as in it's very high in its exposure value so what you would do in the first instance in the in the primary node here so what we really want to do is bring some of the darks down a little bit first touch the bottom and maybe just bring the lights back up a little bit so that's all the color correcting on the clip so let's jump straight into some grading and first of all what we want to do is make sure we've got reference images from the director but don't forget the audience will also have expectations of the type of genre that it is so in this case we've got two gangsters carrying what looks like a dead body and in gangster thrillers or even sci-fi there tends to be more greens and blues used in the look of the film so let's work on that we've moved to the grade node and we're going to move straight down to the shadows and the lift what i really want to do is start pushing some green into the shadows at the back and you can go as far as you want i'm just very careful with the mid tones and the lights just because that can affect the skin tone so people will expect to see in this case they're white pink people you really need to just be careful they don't go too green so when you're pushing it in just try and find a nice balance and on the vector scope as well it will show you the skin tones here just make sure that's a nice line going between the yellow and the red and just scrub through and see what that looks like we can see that's that's quite a nice color so far and the other thing you can start to do if you want this jacket a little bit darker start working on things like the contrast so start making the darks darker and start giving a much moodier look if that's what you want and maybe bring some of the lighter elements down and there you've got a basic grade already so if you want to see how that looks with or without the grade shift d on a mac or a windows machine and it will turn the grade on and off so you can see before and after so that's before and that's after if that's what the director is looking for job done so jumping into the second scene here we want to try and match the second scene with the first scene as best we can so we want to start introducing some green again into the darks pushing that down and trying to match that with the scene before a bit too much green here one of the things you can do is a secondary and i've just added another node here called a secondary and we can place a shape over something and we can basically say please ignore this from the grade pick a face here and this is called feathering so it just makes the edges a little less obvious and the other thing you can do is use the tracking function click the tracking function and it will grab hold of that object and it will hold and move with the object which is really cool so basically you can then affect this little space here with the color wheel so you think that is getting too green you could always use the offset for example to then push it away from green and make it a little bit more pink and try and bring a little bit more color back in. It's very subtle, you can hopefully see it, but let's make it really, really pink. And that can affect the tone. So you've got a really good grade, put it to the grade like that. You can see the difference in his color compared to everybody else. You've really got to try and preserve the skin tones and colors of the individual actors. And we can see as we move through, his skin tones are nicely preserved. So jumping into the third scene, we can see this is a lovely warm color and that's absolutely fine for this, this genre, which happens to be a comedy. And we can see across the board, there is more red and green uh, than there is blue. So one of the things that we could do is just give it a slightly more filmic look and start to introduce more contrast to the piece, depending on how much you want. That's starting to make that look a little bit more filmic. And again, if the director did want something a little less warm, then start pushing it away from the oranges and yellows and move it more towards the blues and give it a much more neutral color. You may want a bit more washed out. And you can, you can do the same thing with saturation. If the director decides actually that's too saturated and I want this to be a little bit cooler, then start taking the saturation out. And you can see again that becomes very, very neutral. But again, that might be what the director's looking for. And start messing around with contrast. Add more contrast in and you've got another look again. So jumping into the last one, there isn't really much we need Need to do on this in terms of the grade we have made it look a little bit warmer and we've stretched out the highlights and the lows so the other thing you can do and in the paid version there are more of these but there are LUTs here that you can introduce to your footage to see what they look like if you wanted to give it a film look for example here like a 35 mil or a 16 mil film look then you could introduce that double click on the grade node here and scrub through and see what that looks like if it's a bit light then obviously you can bring that down a bit if it's a uh, it's a, the contrast needs bringing out a little bit you can adjust that and play around with it so i've just taken that off so we can look at other plugins that you may be using and you can drop those onto the grade node and see what difference that makes now one thing i would do is lots of people use mojo because it's quick and easy i don't tend to just drop it in as is i like to mess around with it quite a bit and i take the strength right down just to make sure that it's not too overwhelming and just bring it in at the point where it's just just about noticeable and always scrub through see what it looks like remember to keep checking your parade 
grade scopes as well. We don't have to worry about skin tone, so we're not watching the vector scope here too much. And maybe we want to bring the highlights down a little bit. I don't think I exposed this particularly well on the day because I was too excited looking at these lovely dogs. And there we go. We've got some nice graded 4K footage of dogs on a beach. So that's really it. That's the introduction to color correction, getting your exposure right, getting a nice neutral picture, and then introducing a basic grade. Thank you so much for watching. If you like, please hit the like button and please subscribe. Plenty of videos coming up. And please let us know your questions. Is there questions about filming or sound or equipment that you're particularly interested in? Then please post them below. I love getting involved in conversations. So do that, get involved, let me know, and I'll see you in the next video.